Hi everyone, it's Roger and James here from the What's on Disney Plus podcast. In this bonus um, club episode, we're going to be giving our retro review of The Black Cauldron, which was released way back in 1985. But before we go on to any of that, quick bit of housekeeping. If you haven't already done so, make sure you do subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find us on all the different podcast platforms as well. So make sure you subscribe there. Also a big hello and thank you to all of our patrons as well for their support. From as little as a dollar a month, you can help um, support the channel. You can also get access to exclusive weekly video. You also get some behind the scenes footage. You also get um, early access, including to this episode when we do the retro reviews. They come out a little bit earlier for patrons. So, big thank you to Jacob, Sarah, Joshua, The Juice, What's on Netflix, Andrew, and Julie for all of your support. So, let's jump into it. So, The Black Cauldron, James, what is your initial impressions of this movie? That's a bit of a mess, isn't it? <laughs> um... Had you seen yeah, no, it I'm going to leave it at that. What, what are your thoughts? I had, see, I watched this movie and I had never seen it before. So I'd come in completely fresh, didn't have any idea what it was. Sort of watched it. I'm like, okay, it's a bit, it, it's a bit dark. There's a few things where you're like, okay, this seemed a little bit ahead of its time. You know, the fact of like the princess, she was very much along the lines of, you know, I don't need, I don't need rescuing. I don't need, you know, or if I do we need rescuing, I need someone better than you. It kind of was like, seemed way ahead of its time. You know, I was like, okay, she doesn't need someone. To, and I was like, well, this is like 19, mid 1980s. That's quite ahead of its times. Um, it just seemed a little bit odd. I mean, there was just like weird random characters like this pig that could see the future. And we had Gollum. I mean, Gollum was in there as well, running around. Um, Fake Gollum, yes. Did I mean, I'm literally, I'm, I was like, this is this is this is Gollum. This, his voice was identical. I can't even think of what the dog was called, but he literally it's had the like same. Gurgy or groovy yeah. or something like that. I, mean, I, 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 like... I know, and I've never seen the 1978. I think it was yeah. Lord of the Rings, so I don't know what Gollum sounded like in that. But this it this sounded exactly like Andy Serkis's Gollum from Two yeah. Towers and and uh, Return of the King. It was just like I did a double take on that. Yeah. I, I, I started thinking look up. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I was like, wait, what? I actually did a couple double takes in this movie. Yeah. Uh, one we'll talk about at the end, but uh, not good ones either. Not like, um, oh, wow, I need to see that again because that was so cool. It was kind of like, wait, wait, what did you just do? Are, can you do that? I mean, it was just very strange. I mean, it's like, you know, he had a sword and he kind of gave it. And then he had these like weird woman w- witches that he kind of, and then it's like, he wanted this cauldron and, I don't know. It was very, very strange. I mean, I like the sidekicks. I thought, you know, but there just seemed to be a lot of characters that you just didn't seem to make, like these little fairies and all the rest of it. And I was just like, okay. And then like the, the horn, was the horned king, like such a cool looking villain. And he's pretty vicious and he kind of kills without, but they didn't really seem to be like, I don't know. It didn't seem to be like that big ending that you kind of were looking for. It's like, you know, here's his army and he defeated him in like 10 seconds yeah and the ending is just strange where you know there, there's no fight uh he initiates the cauldron and then oh no then we'll talk about the cauldron yeah. in a second but <laughs> this reminded me a lot actually of artemis fowl which we talked about several weeks yeah. ago um and and even more weeks yeah. ago for people catching this on the, the regular release but uh what i mean by that is it felt like we're missing a lot and things are just happening because that's what, how they happened in the books. Although I realized that a lot was changed from the books. I, the, the list on IMDb of changes from the book is just massive. Um, but they compress two books into this one movie and obviously context is just gone, completely gone. Yeah. It was a little bit of like a weird, it's just like, okay, well, what? it's like, couldn't really it kind of was get, it got going and i'm like well i got 20 minutes left and either the movie could have ended there or hasn't really kind of got going and yeah it was a bit of an odd one it was definitely a strange movie it, it if i think looking back on it now if like it doesn't exist that dark it doesn't feel that different um you know a lot was made at the time of it being like the first pg like disney animated movie and it nearly wrecked disney making any more animated movies it was such a bomb and you kind of look at it now and go, was it just ahead of its time? Or was it just like, like if they were, I mean, I know there's a lot of talk now of a remake. It's like, maybe they could do it and it would be better because they, they would be a much more willing to take that risk with it. But it just seems a bit odd. I mean, they're like, there's this, there's so many characters in here that I didn't really understand what their point was. Like there was this old man, like, 
and he obviously he being shut up and he got turned into a toad and bouncing around the bosom and you're just like what is going on here <laughs> and he's, he's got a harp that like tells when he's lying but he doesn't do anything he does literally nothing in the entire movie and i was reading on imdb some of the behind the scenes stuff and like apparently there's just this crazy um reanimation of the dead sequence that yeah. like they're talking about festering and and bile and stuff I'm like well i didn't see that and apparently it all got cut out because the the CEO of Disney or maybe the head of the animation was department it, was, was it Eisner at the time. Was it, was it, it was right before Eisner. Yeah. Um, and, but they were new at the job and yeah. they watched it and they're like, Nope, no, we're not doing this. Cause big deal about it being PG, obviously everything before that had been G. Yeah. They were the original cut they were expecting could have actually gotten an R rating. Um, yeah. And that was the thing was like, Nope, we cannot do an R rated movie. Um, can't do a PG-13 movie. So they, they cut it down to PG, but they're doing these edits after the movie was done. Yeah. Animation was done. You don't do this in animation. Once the animation is done, you pretty much leave it alone. And they cut out giant things of it. It's particularly from the end. And that's why the ending really doesn't make any sense. And yeah, and there was a big question, can we do an animated movie uh, that's mature? People won't accept it. And of course you mentioned uh, kind of a bit ahead of its time we would see in the very near future for that movie, you know, um, stuff like the land before time. Yeah. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, America goes American tale. Or uh, oh, five goes West. Yeah. I was actually thinking of the rats and Nim or the secret of Nim, depending on where you're at. Dogs, They're very, dogs, all dogs go to heaven. All dogs go to heaven. These are the, they're still kids' movie, but they have very dark undertones yeah. to them. And some scenes where, he, as a kid, he was like, "What the heck's going on here?" You know, the death of Littlefoot's mom in, in mm-hmm. *Land Before Time* and stuff like that. And then, of course, right after that, we would start in we being the the country yeah. would start importing some of the Japanese movies like *Akira* and *Ghost in the Shell*. And that's just straight up for adults. That's that's not yeah. kid at all. It's definitely it, it was it's definitely kind of that weird thing of it. it it's kind of out of time. Like if that was released now, they probably would push the edge a little bit further and kind of get away with a little bit more of it. But at the same time, it was there was hope aspects of it that like you're just there going, well, yeah, like you said, there was no big ending. There was no big, you just got sucked into the cauldron, and they all yeah, ran away. It, and it was just like okay, and it, okay, so it wasn't even just that he was in, into the cauldron. It's how that happened in the first place. You know, the the which uh, the the Horn King. You know, he, he activates the cauldron and all the dead come back to life. He's got his army and like, oh, something's got to do. And, and and then they're up on that cliff like, oh, we've got to do something about that. And the little, little fake Dobby, fake Gollum, whatever. He's like, <laughs> Dobby has no friends. Dobby is going to go jump for Sirius Black. And he just jumps off the cliff. Like, what is going on here? It's not even a... It's not like a, a noble... I know they talk about it a little yeah. bit. Like someone's got to... But, yeah, fake Dobby's just like, all right, I'm just gonna jump off the cliff. I don't, like, that was the the moment where I was like, what is going on here? I did an actual double take. Like, am I watching this? And I said things that I'm not gonna repeat here, yeah. uh, just because like, I get the but, right. and, <laughs> yeah. And then and then him jumping into the cliff and him jumping in apparently makes all of the stuff come back and the undead yeah. army dies again. And then the Horn King just gets sucked into it. And you're like. Well, that was that was kind of anticlimactic. Well, it's kind of it's almost like like the ultimate sacrifice of him, kind of giving this, wasn't it? Because he was kind of giving the sword or going in to just to bring back the dog. Right, right. Then, and that, that was... kind of set that whole kind of, and it was a little bit like, okay. And obviously, then they had the dog, and they kind of did the fake the, the fake out of like, is well, is will he survive or not? And it was just a very strange. And then obviously they did the kiss at the end, and it's like okay, but. Yeah, very strange little movie. Um, I can see why it kind of got lost in the Disney vault and why it's just not really used, not talked about. It didn't really have, it didn't have any music. I don't remember any no, music there, from that. Music. That was another thing that was big about the movie. It was the first Disney animated movie that did not have a musical number. Mm. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, in some ways it doesn't necessarily automatically have to be have music. I mean, so I, I'm thinking here like Big Hero 6, they didn't have a big musical bit. Even like Wreck It Ralph, 
did that one the second no, one did. No, the, the first one, one didn't have a musical number yeah. in it. I mean, it had I think it had some um I'm going to use the term wrong here. Sugar Rush, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it had like some overlays where yeah. there was somebody singing and we yeah. got the montage, but there wasn't like yeah, Vanellope and, and Ralph didn't like burst yeah. into song at some point. Yeah, um but I kind of some way like there's just like, there didn't seem to be any music in there that kind of caught attention. It was a very like I said, it, it feels like it was out at the wrong time. And in some ways, you know, a lot of talk about going back and redoing it. And I'm thinking like, yeah, maybe another stab at it, different eyes, different levels, and maybe, you know, if trying to cut, push two books into uh, one movie doesn't work. You know, we've seen that yeah. on a number of occasions. This, this would be very similar to, the, to them saying, we're going to do The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers, and we're going to do it in one hour and a half movie. And anybody... I mean, who's seen those, the actual movies would be like, there is no way you could do this in an hour and a half or two hour movie. Um, yeah. So if they did this as a television series, uh, live action or animated, doesn't really matter. Um, give it enough room to, to properly develop these characters, properly develop the plot points. I think it would actually be solid. And the one success for this movie, uh, again, tying back to Artemis Fowl here is even though the movie itself didn't really succeed in my opinion, uh, I am interested in going and checking out the books because you can see where the interesting stuff is. They just had to rush through it so fast you didn't get a chance to explore it. So I'm, I'm probably going to see if I can find these books. Mm. I mean, it shouldn't be too hard. They're, they're still rather famous, mm. but... I'm sure uh, you'll find and, them on like Kindle them. or something like that. So, oh, yeah, certainly. Yeah. I, I'm hoping I can find them on audiobook, but that might be a, a little bit of a harder... Yeah, it, it, was, it was one of those kind of ones that gone, okay, I've seen it. I probably won't watch it again. I'm glad I have seen it. Um, but it was a bit, it was the kind of thing like, yeah, I can see why this didn't. There's a lot of great things about it. And um, I think like the animation seemed a lot, seemed pretty good. You know, the whole horn scene, I, you know, I, I, he just, he looked like a cool villain. Kind of reminded a bit of Skeletor. I mean, it might have been, I don't know when He Man would have just been around then. So it kind of ties in with all that kind of thing. But, but, he also the, the main character kind of just reminded me of like Ward from Sword in the Stone. There wasn't really any like it's like well you're just a pig farmer, but you've not really given me any reason why to believe that you're the greatest. <laughs> there was well as it turned out he wasn't he, he, he yeah. wasn't important until he got the magic sword which did all the fighting for him. Yeah, um, John Hurt was great as the voice of the villain of the Horned King. Yeah. Uh, John Hurt's great in just about everything. Yeah. So that, that's not a surprise. I will say, you mentioned the animation. When this movie started up, like the first minute of the movie, I was like, when was this made? Because yeah. they, it looked like the opening to like Snow White. Um, yeah. and, I, and I went in, and IMDb mentioned it specifically. That yeah. opening sequence was shot on the multiplane camera, which... Yeah had not been used in like 30 years. And, and when you get that, that opening sequence, you're like, this is the cottage in the wood from, from Snow White or, or the Seven yeah. Dwarves or something like that. Like, and, and I had to, to double check, like this was made in the eighties, right? Of course, that's the only yeah. scene where it, it really seems that way. But well, that opening was, was definitely a little bit of a shocker. Yeah, it was it kind of like this really weird thing, isn't it? it was like it's an old movie, but it isn't an old movie, but it, it, yeah, time's not been great to it. But yeah, in some ways as well, it doesn't, you know, it's like, this is a benefit of Disney Plus. You've kind of got the option, you have, you know, because I think I even own it on Blu-ray or DVD. I'm sure I picked it, because I was always, you know, when they get a big stack falls of all the animated classics. Yeah, I mean, I know I've got like other ones on there that I've not seen. They're just like, you know, they're like three quid, four quid, the cheap, especially these kind of ones are like cheap ones. You know, like, oh, I haven't seen that one. I'll add it. Now, you know, you have to make sure you've got all the numbers kind of thing. And it's like, oh, I'll get around to watching it. <laughs> and this was like, we, we said, but this was like, no, we're actually going to sit there and watch this movie and kind of get through it. And yeah, I, I'm really glad I have seen it. I kind of feel like I've got a little bit more like Disney history of watching it a bit more. But in some ways, I'm never going to see any of these characters turn up anywhere else it's it was like a one shot thing yeah unless they do a remake or alternatively i don't think this would ever happen but if they released the original cut of the movie um the r-rated cut uh or the snyder cut. 13 whatever <laughs> if <laughs> the snyder cut uh hey it worked for the justice league or, yeah. or will work for the justice league soon if they released that i would check that out just to see 
what they were so afraid of. Apparently during one of the test screenings, people actually left uh, because yeah. it was, it was a little too, too visceral for kids. So I can understand yeah. why they would cut that, but I am morbidly mm. curious. What did they do that was, that would have made an R rated Disney movie in 1985? Yeah. But I don't, I can't see them ever doing it. I don't think they're going no, to invest so. any money. In, it, uh, this is like, this is in the, it, like it's there. You enjoy it. If you want it. But if you have seen The Black Cauldron, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, make sure you do get in touch either um, through the comments or on Patreon or through social media. I always like to hear um, your thoughts. on it. So James, what's your kind of closing thoughts of The Black Cauldron? I don't regret watching it. I don't see myself ever watching it again. And I don't think anyone needs to rush out and see it. But, it, you know, it's not bad for what it is. I don't think you catch it really said that. I don't think I would have said that any really different movie. Glad I've seen it. Won't watch it again. Um, but yeah, watch it if you want to. It's, it's kind of a strange one. But nevertheless, um, go check us out over at what's on Disney Plus.com. Like, follow, and subscribe. And we shall see you guys in another episode. Laters. Mm-hmm.